Hey guys, Alex and Ryan here from Raw Mobile. Today we are taking an in-depth look at the Alcatel A30. This is a $60 budget Android phone running Android 7.0 Nougat. Let's take a look. Alright guys, so starting out with the build. It's all plastic design. I think I showed you guys this uh, in the initial review, but you can kind of see. Removable plastic back, non-removable battery, so just keep that in mind. The device weighs about 145 grams and is approximately 8.4 millimeters thick. So you can see that in comparison to my hand, kind of the size that you're looking at. Uh, for the display, we have a 5-inch IPS LCD display. So that is 1280 by 720 or 294 pixels per inch. Does not have a fingerprint scanner, so just bear that in mind. Um, your volume rocker and lock button are on the side as well over here. And we have a standard regular micro USB port, not USB type C. On the left side we have nothing, and on the top we have a headphone jack. Processor, you're getting a Qualcomm Snapdragon 210 processor, quad core, and for your GPU, you're getting a Qualcomm Adreno 304 GPU, two gigabytes of RAM, 16 gigabytes of internal storage, and of course, it is expandable with microSD. Finally, for the battery, you're looking at a 2460 milliamp hour battery. And if you guys are wondering, we ran uh, the Antutu benchmark um, on the phone, got a 21955. So pretty much what I expected from the Snapdragon uh, 210. Um, not terrible. Not the best either, so just give you know just give you guys uh, a base marker what it, what it's gonna look like. All right, guys. So you're getting Android 7.0 out of the box nougat. Um, with the camera, you're getting an eight megapixel shooter, uh, single LED flash, and again that's gonna take pictures in the four by three aspect ratio. Um, camera recording up to 720p at 30 frames per second. Underneath. Taking a look at the SIM card slot and the SD card slot. Maybe right here. Uh, it has a nano SIM, regular micro SD. Um, again, not a removable battery. That is what that looks like if you guys wanted to see. All right, guys, so let's talk about what we, what we like about the phone. I'll tell you right now up front, my favorite thing about this phone is that it costs $60 and you're getting Android 7.0 Nougat. Um, I don't think there's any other phone in the market this cheap that you can get that's running this version of Android. And not to mention, the skin that Alcatel chooses to use is very, very, very light. It's not obtrusive, it doesn't get in your way. And for the processor, it actually runs very, very smoothly. That's something that I liked. I'd have to agree um, with everything he said. I mean, getting Android Nougat on this phone is awesome. There are some phones that have been out that are uh, way more expensive, um, higher end features, and they don't have Android Nougat. So uh, pretty unacceptable in my opinion and it's really nice that Alcatel is giving you nougat out of the box and uh, nougat that works pretty well too uh, for instance um if we go into youtube oh, there's little, something little, there's, uh, there's something there for my con session actually we're going <laughs> to yeah. talk about that yeah we'll talk about that later <laughs> but now that we have youtube up um so you can do the uh split screen feature which i think is really cool um pulling up two apps I think this is really useful, even though you know it's only a five inch screen, I think this is still really useful and it works, which I was pretty impressed with. Um, oh, oh, look at this video, who are these guys? We'll pull that video up really quick. <laughs> so another thing I really liked is that when you look on Amazon, you can actually get this phone uh, as a GSM model or you can get a Verizon variant, which is really nice. Um, a lot of these unlocked phones, budget phones, aren't coming out for Verizon, so it's nice that they're doing that, uh, giving you that option, that flexibility. Um, another thing I really liked, having the SD card slot. So you're getting 16 gigs, but you have an SD card slot. So you can expand that storage. You don't have to worry about running out of space. I think it's a really nice feature that they added onto the phone. Right, so guys, looking at the gaming on the phone. So are you gonna be doing the most graphics intensive gaming on the Snapdragon 210? I don't think so. I don't think anyone expects to though. So when looking at FIFA Mobile, which I downloaded, um, I was actually pretty impressed. It was able to play the game perfectly fine. I personally don't do a lot of gaming on my phone. Um, I just, I don't know, I've never been in video games on my phone, um, but I know a lot of people do, so how does FIFA do? So let me just put in a... Uh... So, I'm going to have to continue. I think I'm just going to do that. Can I score? Sweet, I scored. 
He did that by accident. Uh, I did not do that by accident. <laughs> I've been playing this game. Actually, it's actually a pretty fun game. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, he saved it. Dang. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. It's seriously, actually, a pretty fun game. I used to play soccer when I was younger, and this is pretty fun. So yeah, but look you, at this. There's this is not bad. You guys can see there's no stutter. Frame Other than me wise. not scoring right now, which is getting kind of embarrassing. I'd like to score at least one more. We'll blame we'll blame we it on the processor. There we That's go. That's what's happening. And you know, <laughs> I played a full game, and uh, like I said, no issue. This is not a bad phone for gaming. Just you know, know its limits. Last thing that I really wanted to add to the pros list, guys. Um, I use this as a hotspot actually here for my MacBook Pro. I was streaming 1080p video using this as a hotspot on the MacBook Pro, and I did not have any buffering whatsoever. Now, fair warning, that is going to vary by carrier. It depends where you are and what carrier you have. But it does say a lot about the phone that I was able to do that. Um, the phone didn't you know, turn to 100 degrees in my pocket, and it didn't hurt the battery as bad as I expected it to. That's a huge pro for me because it <laughs> shows that the device can be used for more than just regular browsing on on the device itself but you can use it in conjunction with other devices that you have moving on to cons um one of the biggest issues that i had personally uh using the phone as my daily driver is um as you can see right there so i type pretty quickly and it doesn't really keep up with what i'm typing so it just there's a noticeable lag when using this, um, especially when when deleting things, you hit delete like three times and then it catches up. That was probably my biggest issue with trying to use it. I, I really had not too many issues with the phone, but just something as simple as, and this is Gboard. It, it comes pre-installed with Gboard, um, which is my favorite keyboard. I install it on every, every single phone I have. So the fact that it just, there's that delay when typing constantly, it does get a little, is it, is it, is it possible to type? Of course, I'm not saying it's not possible. It's just, it's very um, frustrating after a while when you're trying to type things quickly. One of the things I've noticed, and I think this could have to do with the processor, that, that is one possibility, but I think this may be a result of a lack of responsiveness in the screen itself. Um, I'm gonna try yeah, to replicate true. this for you guys. You need to be very specific about what you're hitting. And I'm just gonna give you an example right now. If you guys can see, my Gmail app is right here. I'm gonna hit that. I'm pressing it. Nothing is happening because I'm not directly pressing the center of the Gmail app, and then it works. This happens a lot when you are, for example, uh, typing a message and you have a mistype and you want to hit the delete button. So if I say this phone, oh, no autocorrect, hang on. <laughs> this phone has some typing issues, right? If I want to delete that, I'm pressing delete and nothing is happening. Maybe it's three just, out of four clicks and you skipping. can see that. It starts skipping. I'm pressing it right now and nothing is happening unless I'm directly on that. I know that sounds like I'm being picky guys, but believe me in daily use, you will find yourself frustrated sometimes when you're typing people, especially if you're in a serious conversation with someone and you're trying to type a long message. I've also noticed the longer that the message gets, the more issues the keyboard starts to have because it's processing more and it's trying to do language, it's trying to understand the language that you're using in context of the sentence. So that's something I bear in mind, guys, is the responsiveness of the screen and the responsiveness of the typing and the keyboard as one of the cons of this phone. So of course, guys, also the battery. We should probably talk about that. So <laughs> this is interesting. Ryan and I have both had different experiences with the battery. We have different usage cases, of course. Um, on an average day, it got me through an eight to five schedule. Okay, I was just about dead at about five o'clock, 5.30. I did actually go through the phone with a full day of heavy usage where I was YouTubing, uh, I was using the camera a lot, and I was dead by one o'clock. And I took it off the charger at uh, about 7.30 in the morning. So the phone got very hot and the phone was dead completely by about one o'clock. So that's something to keep in mind is you may not have the best response when it comes to your battery. And see, for me, you know, I, I had it, I was using it from probably about nine o'clock in the morning to about nine o'clock at night. And I, it lasted me the whole day. I mean, it probably was about dead at nine, but so I guess it depends on your usage, guys. Heavy usage versus moderate. He, he used it obviously heavier than I did. Um, I think using it as just a regular phone, I think you're going to yeah. be okay again through the day. One last thing I wanted to show you guys, I actually restarted the phone specifically so I could show you this. There's quite a bit of startup lag. If you have just started the phone, you see I'm sitting here waiting and waiting. Finally got my kick to open. If I go to my gallery, I want to look at some pictures. I'm waiting and waiting. 
Finally, it's done. So yeah. it, it's not horrible, but there's going to be a little bit of lag. You really have to give the phone a chance to wake up in the morning if you shut it off. <laughs> That's something to keep in mind, I think, very important. So when looking at the camera, for me, this is one of the cons. Now, that's not to say that this camera is terrible. Um, when looking at the price point, I don't think it's a terrible camera. I think it does some things pretty well. Um, first and foremost, the 8 megapixel resolution, I think is fine. I had no issue with that. Um, I think that's plenty in this space. But my only problem really when going outside and taking pictures is uh, the white balance and the exposure can get a little crazy. Um, if there's a white background, I know we talked about this before. Yeah, we're gonna uh, we're gonna put up some samples you know, for you guys right now. Yeah, you'll so get you to look see. at the samples, white background, uh, you know, the, the sun's shining. It's really tough. A lot of the shots get blown out. And like I said, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, HDR, um, you know, you can put it into just regular HDR, uh, off and auto. And one uh, HDR auto never triggers HDR on its own. I have I I don't know about you. I have not gotten once to trigger it in any lighting situation at all. Yeah, the phone doesn't exactly <laughs> it doesn't seem to know exactly what to do to compensate uh, for the situation. The only way I got HDR to work is if I manually put HDR on and then it I didn't notice any difference. If anything, it got super bright sometimes and it made it look worse. It yeah. it did not really bring out the details in the shadows how I wanted it to. So I mean to be fair, guys, of course, the the phone is able to produce nice pictures, but you really, ideal really, lighting. really need ideal, to have the ideal, ideal situation. Lighting. And that means outside on a sunny day with no clouds, and then you can get a good shot if you have a steady hand and if you tap to focus and adjust your exposure accordingly, which is a feature I think I should demonstrate here for you guys. Um, you know, let's say I tap on the, uh, let's say I tap to focus on this phone here, you notice that the white starts to blow out because it's a dark phone. You can bring that down. So if you know what you're doing and you know how to use the camera app at anything above a basic level, you should be okay. You should be able to get some good shots. And I think honestly, the autofocus worked pretty well with the camera. I had no issues with it focusing. It focused on whatever I was pointing it at. Um, the the only issue I really had when looking at the video, um, 720p was fine. You know, I was kind of hoping for 1080p, but that's okay. 720p works too. It's still HD. Um, the only issue I had, while there is continuous autofocus with the video. I didn't notice it really working sometimes. I would bring my hand in close, wouldn't focus. I'd bring my hand out further, wouldn't focus. But then other times it would focus. It would continually focus. It just kind of did it slowly, it's depending on the lighting. It's gonna be hard for you guys to see on video. <laughs> so, so you know, keep these things in mind. Now, for the quick shot, I mean, if you're just using this phone just to get a quick video, quick picture, post it on Facebook, Instagram, I don't think you're gonna have any issue with it. If you're a camera fanatic though, and you really, really, you know, want to take some amazing shots with your phone, I don't think this is going to be the phone for you. Just a quick little video test for you guys so you can hear how the audio sounds as well. I'm going to try to get up close here and get a little macro. These flowers, really not bad. I mean, it does well with the yellow. Mm, can't really say the same for the red. That's very, very blown out. But if you're not looking at really bright colors like that, you do get a, a fair amount of detail looking at this, just to give you a, a size comparison. You can kind of see what we're looking at there. Um, the sky doesn't get too blown out, so you can obviously tell it's a cloudy day anyway, so the sky should look a little bit white. Uh, but there is a little bit of a lack of detail on the trees out there. Um, that's, of course, to be expected, but just keep that in mind. We have a kind of a medium lighting test. We're indoors. It's kind of a cloudy day, so... Light coming in the windows, but it's not exactly the brightest day, you can see. Um, it's doing okay. There's a lot of grain going on right now. Um, you can tell kind of if you look at the, the back wall there, there's a whole lot of grain happening, and you're not getting a whole lot of detail. Even though I'm putting my hand directly in front of the camera, you're really not getting a whole lot of detail. Let's take a look at a really low light situation. All right, guys. So uh, here we're taking a look at a... Uh very very low light situation um in a basement where the lights are completely off uh that is alex can you guys see me yes um no. so there is continuous autofocus but i feel like sometimes in lower light uh situations it is struggling just a bit um but yeah so you can do it you can record in a basement remember guys again we mentioned this in our initial review for the photos if you want the full 8 megapixel resolution, you're going to be an aspect ratio of 4, th four by 3. So some people like that, some people don't. If you want Depends. 16 by 9, you're going to be looking at 5 megapixels. Um, but it does record in HD 720p. And, and honestly, the front-facing camera, um, 
it was fine. I really didn't have any issues with it. It I, I don't expect much out of my front facing camera though, personally. Mm. As long as it takes a picture of me, I'm pretty much happy. Um Yeah, we're getting got the, the job. We're done. getting to the point now where it's very it's kind of difficult to get a really good front facing camera. A lot of them don't handle low light very well. Uh, some of the newer phones are even including the flash ability on the screen where your screen actually lights up to bring a little yeah, extra light. Yeah, or they have a flash, a little flash right next to the camera. Or they so have a front facing flash. This so. is the last topic I really wanted to discuss about the camera. And this is actually a pro, uh, not a con. So we're actually, there are a few positive things to talk about with the camera here. This little feature called instant collage. I, I like it. Um, people who buy this phone are most likely going to love it. You can take a, pl a picture live of any type of collage. So you could do just uh, two pictures together. You could do four but you actually are able to snap the pictures together and build the collage right in front of you. Uh, this is great if you're on vacation, you're, you're with friends, you're at the beach or something and you have a couple friends together doing something silly and you wanna get it all in one picture but don't feel like editing it later in another app, you can do it right here in the app, which I really like. Also, another cool feature is uh, time-lapse. And again, not every phone is gonna come with that pre-installed, so that's pretty cool to have. Um, you know, especially in the budget phone realm, getting that right off the bat, pretty cool. Uh, we had some fun with it. You know, we <laughs> messing around with the cars, using the time lapse feature, pretty cool. Um, nice feature to have, definitely. So guys, overall, what do we think of the phone as an overview? Um, in my opinion, I think it's a very, very good phone for $60. I personally would not have bought the $60 Amazon ads version. Um, you maybe spent I, the hundred? May, I would have spent the hundred. Maybe I just have OCD. I get very annoyed that every time I yeah. open my phone, I close that one. There's another advertisement. I close it again, and they keep popping up. Now, for some people, that's not going to be an issue. They really don't mind See, the ads. See, me personally, I don't mind it. I could deal with that for the discount. I think that's pretty awesome. You can get it for that price. Yeah, I, th I think uh, <laughs> I'm just a really, really pure Android You're enthusiast. You're just crazy a little bit. A little bit crazy. Little bit crazy. I just crazy. love to have everything as clean cut as, as, as possible. So I actually would have spent the extra $40 to get the regular version if I was going to get this phone. But overall, guys, just my thoughts on the phone. I think for what you pay, you're getting a lot and when i say a lot i mean much more than i would expect that you'd be able to get for this price with or without the ads yeah back in the day i don't know if you could have gotten such a nice phone for 60 dollars. i don't think you could Abs they would not, not be like this um, at all. if i was going to price this maybe in 2012 i think you'd probably be looking at maybe 200 dollars, yeah, maybe probably, 199 maybe probably, 179 yeah. or something like that so what i like about the phone i love the fact that the skin is simple it's clean cut it's not obtrusive uh, it's, it's as close to Android as you're going to get. And speaking on Android, you're getting Nougat right out of the box, which I love. Uh, I love the fact that uh, you have your camera in the back and your camera in the front. Although they're not crazy good, they do take decent pictures if you have a good lighting situation. How often you take pictures in the dark or in a dark lighting situation yeah, is going to vary yeah. by person. But I know I personally don't. The only reason I ever talk about low light when I'm discussing a camera is because you should cover that in a review. <laughs> but most people don't actually take those kinds of shots usually. And guys, you know, I, I'd have to agree. I think this is a pretty good phone for the price. I think it, it's hard to beat. When looking at this budget area, is there better phones at this price point? Looking at the Blue R1 HD. Honestly speaking, I think the Blue R1 HD has this beat because you can also get it for the same price off Amazon. Um, it does have a better processor higher uh, benchmark scores. Um, I think it has a little bit of a better camera, a little bit of a better screen. Again, this might be like up to each person. You gotta look at the phones. I think personally, as far as the lag is concerned, I think that's the one thing that you're just, it's just gonna be a better experience probably on the blue. Um, but again, if you have the Blue R1 HD and you hate it for whatever reason and you absolutely cannot stand it, I would recommend you pick up this phone, guys. Try it out because it's not a bad phone. This is a pretty good deal. Amazon's offering it for an awesome price. And uh, I would say check it out, guys. I think it's a pretty good phone. So for somebody who's had neither of those phones before, either the A30 or the Blue R1 HD, is this a pass or is it a buy? Guys, I'm gonna say honestly, especially if you're getting off Amazon, especially you're getting, you know, the Amazon ads version that's that's you know at 60 bucks. I, I'd say buy it, guys. Buy it, try it out. And listen, you have 30 days. You have 30 days. So if you absolutely hate the phone, you can return it and get you know the blue or one of the other phones. But honestly, I think you're gonna like it. Again, if you're not camera centric, I think this is gonna be a perfectly fine phone for you. I think you're gonna enjoy it. 
All right, guys, that was the full review of the Alcatel A30. If you like the style of these in-depth reviews and you want to see more, definitely hit the like button and subscribe for more content. If you have any suggestions of great budget phones that you guys want to see reviewed or any head-to-head -head comparisons, put them in the comments below. Of course, follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Links are down in the description. We'll see you next time.